Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check some of these headlines. Crypto market cap, new all-time highs. Who's excited about it? I know this guy is. Flair and Songbird News. And by the way, when Coinbase, ah, proof that Ripple expansion is global. And we need to remember that it is the United States that has confusion about what XRP is. And we have a couple questions for you here about Ripple and some of their potential possibilities that maybe are on the table. We're going to talk about that. We also have news of John Deaton representing the over 50,000 XRP investors denied yesterday, but we have a couple very important points and takeaways from that, and we need to know we're going to have many battles along the way, but this war is not over by a long shot. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything we're talking about here today. $2.632 trillion market cap, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, how about that one? Lots of money in here, and we're breaking new ground, as they say. CoinGecko said just a few days, few days ago, 2.6 is the new all-time high for the cryptocurrency market cap. It's all new money pouring in at this point, and I love it. So we're up 3.84% on the market cap, and let's just look really quickly at the prices. Bitcoin, $64,922 right now. Ethereum is well over 4000 with up, up, almost 9% on the 24-hour here, 4000 $221.63. Cardano moving a bit here, up over 4% at $2.24. XRP sitting now at $114, up a couple percent this morning. Let's look at the price range here very quickly. Looking at the price range, we're at 113. We were at 114 just a second ago. And looking at 11125 on the low end of price and 11623 on the upper end. Let's go ahead and look at this right here. If you put green energy into Bitcoin miners, you need to up your fossil fuel imports. Yeah, Mr. DeVry said you're just displacing the problem. You know, this goes back to a reminder to me uh, this past summer from Chris Larson, right? Co-founder of Ripple, who said that Bitcoin needs to make the migration from proof of work to proof of stake. We know Ethereum is in the process of doing that as well. Proof of work doesn't work for a long-term solution. The energy consumption is absolutely out of control. So looking here, we see Songbird can take its own path. It can do different things with the state connector, include different tokens. It can completely diverge from its Canary Network role. It is up to token holders and developers that want to develop on Songbird. And Shout out to uh, Hugo and Flair. And here's the question here is when Coinbase with Songbird, why haven't we heard anything? Did I miss it? Because I haven't heard anything about how to get my Songbird there. I don't know what's going on. Really hope Brian Armstrong and Coinbase crew will answer that shortly. Now, let's set the tone here for where we're going. Because I tell you guys all the time about Link2 and you can get Ripple there and Kraken and Uphold and all this. I have a quick 10 seconds I want you to hear out of this. And then we're going to move into the Ripple News. And understand while we're looking at that Ripple news that if you are accredited, you can get the Ripple shares private equity through link to. You can even use your crypto on Uphold to purchase that if you are accredited. But listen to this quick clip here from CEO Joe Indoso very quickly here. And we want to be helping all those folks regardless of whether they're you know white collar or blue collar, if as long as they can meet those accredited investor requirements. We want to give them an opportunity to participate in this class of investment, because if you look at the last 20, 25 years, there is no asset class that has had better returns than private markets. How about that one? There's nothing else to really hear. This is why I tell you they are an incredible company. And later today, Ripple will be back on the platform. You see, it's fully subscribed. Obviously, it does not last long on this platform. 
And it's really, really exciting to watch this stuff fly off the shelf here. But I have to tell you, later today, 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, there will be more Ripple up on this platform. And they're doing everything they can to offer it to everybody. And accredited investor status has to be met to participate in this. But make sure you go check and see if you're accredited. Now, let's move here to very quickly the news that I think really rolls into this idea of being able to participate in this private equity here. I want to play a quick clip for you that shows what Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple are doing collectively around the world here. This really does say it. Listen to this. Look, I mean, the good news for Ripple is in, since the SEC filed their lawsuit, you know, we really haven't been able to operate in the U.S. because of this uncertainty that has existed and continues to exist. Yeah. Outside the United States, we have continued to have an amazing year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Q3 is a record year on every metric. Uh, you know, so we feel really good about the fact that we can continue to build the business outside the U.S., but on the other hand, like, you know, I'm a U.S. guy. It's a U.S. company. Our headquarters are San Francisco. We have a big office in New York. And, you know, I would like to see the SEC process move forward and get closure. I think the whole industry benefits from that clarity and certainty about how digital assets will be regulated. And that doesn't exist in the United States. And it does exist in other countries, frustratingly. It's very frustrating. And to that point, look at the kind of progress that's being made with different companies everywhere around the world. We covered this the other day with Ripple and Nelnet announced $44 million joint venture to construct sustainable solar solar energy installations. Then what do we see? This is from Matthew Lineye. Ripple and Tranglo expand partnership. Tranglo has also established multiple fiat connections with existing RippleNet customers, including BKK4X, D Money and Siam Commercial Bank. Look at this. Al Ansari Exchange, UAE based foreign exchange and money transfer company, announced the expansion of its partnership with Ripple to deliver cross border payments. Look at this. We're delighted the First Bank of England CBDC Technology Forum meeting has taken place. The minutes have been published here. The role and objective of Technology Forum are clear, and the Digital Pound Foundation is very pleased to see alignment, the key topics identified by the Bank of England with those on its own priority list for discussions, analysis, and thought leadership. We know for years the Bank of England has been a partner with Ripple. We also know Susan Friedman from Ripple, is on the Digital Pound Foundation. And she said yesterday, great to be a part of today's discussion and appreciate the House Agriculture Democrats, Dems, and the House Agriculture GOP Republicans getting together and taking the time to chat with industry participants about public-private cooperation is critical to foster the right regulatory framework for digital assets. Sounds like we're having discussions about settling commodities, is what it sounds like, doesn't it? Pretty remarkable when you think of this and you go back to what Brad said. And Brad Garlinghouse said, you know, he's a U.S. guy. Right. They have a headquarters in San Francisco. They have another huge office in New York. They want to stay here. But you see that they have leaps and bounds happening from around the world, and they cannot do business with customers here in the U.S. with the SEC lawsuit hindering them. And also, by the way, hindering us XRP investors. You know, when I when I see all of this and their efforts to be as clear and and open with market agencies like the SEC, you have to wonder, and I shared this yesterday, if I were Ripple, I would go on Fox Business with Charles Gasparino, Liz Clayman, and announce that I'm considering an IPO in another country because the SEC of the United States doesn't want us here. They're apparently only interested in Bitcoin and Ethereum-based projects in the United States. We need to retweet these kinds of things to our congressmen, to our representatives in our area. This is a big deal because it is really just happening in the U.S. And it's really happening to all of us as well as all of their potential customers. You know, 
This got denied yesterday, but there's some takeaways here. First of all, shout out to John Deaton, who is representing now over 50,000 XRP holders. And this really is important to follow here. So he wrote a letter to Judge Netburn asking if he could submit you know, a thought or two, and obviously, and how that thought, these thoughts could uh, really represent XRP investors and holders, and how we are damaged by the th- another delay in this case. However, you know, we we lost the battle, but we didn't lose the war, right? And the order was denied here from Judge Netburn, and it says XRP holders request to submit a statement with respect to their interest in the scheduling of discovery is denied. But listen, there's some takeaways here. This is the, this is how it was laid out yesterday from Crypto Law. And shout out to Crypto Law here. Order extending discovery on January 14th. It says here the parties acknowledge that they are likely at least 14 expert witnesses that will be deposed. The defendants believe these depositions can reasonably be conducted within 18 business days, given the resources available to the SEC. They further argue that any further delay in resolving this case will cause serious harm to interests of defendants and XRP holders, while the court recognizes that both parties have dedicated substantial resources to prosecute this case given the pending motions. It says also to dismiss and strike the previous adjournment of any deadline to file a motion of summary judgment, the additional time sought by the SEC will not be affected or will not affect the schedule to resolve this case. Rather, the additional time sought by the SEC will allow both sides to complete the outstanding fact discovery and properly prepare for expert depositions. Now, with that being said, let's hear what Jeremy Hogan chimed in here and says and he reminds us the thing to keep in mind is that the judge read the letter and that matters even if an official brief is not allowed the bell is rung what a great understanding that the letter was read you've been heard you weren't allowed to submit right but the letter was read Your point had been heard. And he says here, what really matters is the briefing for summary judgment. That's the important one. And we know it's been said that this thing could go up into March of next year, all the way into May, possibly, of next year. And, you know, Jeremy Hogan has said that for a while now as a reminder that this case with delays could get pushed all the way into the first quarter of next year and slightly beyond. But we can't take off the table the understanding, too, that that's what settlements are about. Both sides stick their guns. They hold their side and say, we're towing the line. We're not going anywhere. We think we can win. The other side says, we think we can win. And at some point, that's how settlements derive out of these things, right? So anything can happen, but so can going all the way into April or May, right? Now, I have just a couple quick clips here, less than a minute between the two of them, I believe, and I want you to hear what John Deaton says, because this is the reminder that this is not just happening to XRP holders, XRP investors here. This is really detrimental what this case means for the entire crypto space. And again, the vision that Gary Gensler has at the SEC that the majority, if not all, of crypto are digital asset securities in his mind. Listen. Even if you hate the company Ripple, and even if you despise the digital asset XRP, you better be praying that the SEC fails in what it is attempting to do. Now, notice that I didn't say uh, that you should root for Ripple. I didn't say that you should root for XRP. I phrased it that you better hope that the SEC falls flat on its face in what it is attempting to do in this case, SEC versus XRP. Now, that's the level set right there. Now, I'm getting ready to show you just one reason, and he shows multiple reasons. But I'm getting ready to show you one reason right here why it is so important that we understand that this goes well beyond us as XRP holders. And this is about the entire crypto space. And what we need to get and understand here is that 
when a market agency takes up cases to sue a, a particular project, sometimes it's about that particular issue. However, in this particular case, because we have a new emerging asset class, I think it's better for us to understand or at least look at all of this information with the perspective of this. Gary Gensler is trying to build the framework that the SEC can control the crypto market broadly. The way to do that is through suing certain entities that can get you the legal decision you need that becomes precedent that you can write a framework around those judicial decisions. That's the scary part of this. Let's hear what he has to say right here. And let's look at the very first sentence of the very first paragraph. And you can see the way they classify the token itself from at least 2013 through the present. Defendants sold over 14.6 billion units of a digital asset security XRP, a digital asset security. OK, so they're claiming that XRP itself, the token, is a security. Listen. You could say digital asset security, Bitcoin, digital asset security, Ethereum, digital asset security, XLM, and on and on and on. Look at how the SEC says from 2013 to the present. That means today's XRP, not 2013s, not 2015s, today. See, the biggest misconception of the entire SEC versus Ripple case is that many people believe that the SEC is only alleging that XRP is a security the way Ripple sells XRP. Mm -hmm. That is simply not true. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at paragraph 89. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is simply not true. They're going after the entire crypto space, and they're trying to use this case to become the legal precedent for the SEC to use this as the legal judgment that gives them the right to craft decisions for the entire crypto space. Make no mistake about that. And you know who else understands that better than anybody or certainly better than me? It's Hester Peirce. She understands what they're doing. And she's had a very, very loud voice here in contention with the understanding that there is supposed clarity in the SEC. Republican member of the SEC says she's criticized the agency's approach to regulating the crypto industry, saying the SEC should be making more of an effort to work with crypto firms to establish rules they can comply with. Well, I offer this to you in Gary Gensler's mind by suing companies like Ripple over XRP. In his mind, I believe that is exactly what he feels like he's doing. He feels like he's setting legal precedent with these court cases he chooses to take up that can become the cornerstone or keystones for him to draft new rules and regulations based around those legal decisions. This case is extremely important, and this is why I'm urging each and every one of you to really, really go sign up for the class action lawsuit on John Deaton's Twitter there is no downside to be a part of this lawsuit. We've just crossed 50,000 signatures, and we need more than 100,000 signatures at this point. We need to be the largest class action lawsuit in the history of class action lawsuits. You know, I can tell you right now, my father <laughs> told me the best way to not be denied in this world is to be undeniable. If we get enough of us organized in the right way, that's exactly what we will be. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below and share with somebody you know. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Make sure you check out all the links in the description box and the comment section. And don't forget, Ripple will be live today at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time on Link2. It will not last long. Don't mess around if you want to get some. The other side of that is, is make sure you check out Look, the only thing better than buying crypto is buying tax-free crypto. That's iTrust Capital. You want to protect your identity online? Pure VPN. I got a link for a special in the, in the description. And uh, Ledger Nano Cold Storage, great cold storage. Many, many specials in there, but you got to click the links. I'll catch all of you on the next one.